See, a lot of people don't know about Iris was, I mean, it was, well, everybody knew it was on the uh, City of Angels soundtrack, which is what we were gonna, you know, we were writing the song and then they, I, I wrote the song for the soundtrack and then, and we were working on our album at the same time. And then we thought, wow, this is a really good song. We're gonna, you know, we're just gonna throw it on our record too. And, uh, and then the City of Angels thing blew up out of control. And then, you know, and Iris remained a hit for a long time. I mean, the record for that song being, you know, number one just got broken by Ed Sheeran. And that's, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. It took 20 years to break that record. And, uh, you know, it was 19 weeks at number one. And, you know, we were, we were nominated for four Grammys. You know, for that song and for and for Dizzy Up the Girl, people don't people don't realize that. You know, but we I was like, we, there's no way we're gonna win. So I had a friend of mine print me up a T-shirt on the night that we were nominated for three Grammys, and it said, I was nominated for three Grammys, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. And um, and they asked, how did this happen? You must be heartbroken. Yeah, you, 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 know, you lost three Grammys, and I just I just opened up my shirt like, hey, here it is. It was really fun. Do I wish we had won? Hell yeah, but you know, I still had fun. I still went to the party and had a great time. Well, I wrote it for the film uh, City of Angels and I went actually went back to the film Wings of Desire, which I, I believe Wing, uh, City of Angels was based on. And I watched that and, and that movie was really, I wrote it from the perspective of the guy, the, the angel guy, who was, who was just like, he'd give up everything just to feel this human thing. And then, and then he comes, and then it sort of comes true for him. It's, it's sort of a weird, like, reverse Pinocchio kind of story. He became a real <laughs> boy. The angel becomes a real boy. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was kind of this weird story, and he realizes how painful it is to be a human. But it's like the point, the point of being human is to like experience that pain in a sort of non-judgmental way because, it, you know, that's the essence of, of, of being human is, is, is the, the ups and the downs. And it's like, the, you know, and accepting, accepting the low parts. You don't have to like it, but you have to accept it. it was the one thing that I was taught, you know. Um, Things aren't always great for me, and, but I gotta accept that. And it makes me that much grateful for when things are up, you know? And, and, and I think that was kind of what, what Nicolas Cage was learning in that movie. And it was, and it was really, it, it, was, it was moving to me, you know? And I got to go to the premiere and I got to sit right behind Nicolas Cage. I sat there looking at the back of his head. That's my brush with fame. Well, that was, Robbie and I, were, we were kneeling down in front of the glass and Rob Cavallo said, we need to put strings on this. And we had never done the strings before and we were like, what? You know, because we still consider ourselves alternative rock snobs, you know? And amongst those K-Rock type circles, we were, we were still cool. We, we, we knelt down on the floor in front of the window and we watched this 16 piece orchestra start sawing away. Ba 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 bum, ba 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 bum. I looked at Robbie and I'm like, we ain't going back, you know? And this was like, it was a big, it was a risk. It was a big risk and we took it. I'm glad we took it because we're still here, you know? And that song, you know, it slammed a lot of doors behind us, but it, it opened a thousand times more doors in front of us. And that song has been like part of so many people's lives. And so many people have written me notes and, and, and talked to me at meet and greets and shows, stop me in the airport. Every, it's like almost every day, you know? Home Depot. Home Depot. <laughs> I'm a god at Home Depot in Hollywood. <laughs> we were sort of just imitating the film in that movie, cutting, kind of cutting. Yeah, cutting ourselves into scenes. Yeah, we were, so yeah. we sort of became part of this yeah. movie they actually in, brought in a some, weird way. They actually brought some props from the movie, like coats and things for us to wear, yeah. which they took. They wouldn't let us keep. They wouldn't let we us tried, keep it. but uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's been an incredible gift that that you know, I never get sick of that one. How can you get sick of a gift? <laughs>